Hello folks, welcome back. In our last video, we took care of dial silvering and took a quick look at the clock. Next is the pendulum. And normally, the way that I work on clocks is I do all of the silvering, the polishing, all that stuff first, and then I do the mechanical stuff. And the pendulum was going to be following that same plan, but looking at it, this is enough of a mystery that I think we're just going to explore it together for a few minutes, and then I'm actually going to leave this for last. So here's our pendulum rod. It's uh, got a really stiff suspension spring. This is amazing. It has this beat adjustment, which is great. It has our main steel shaft and then these two brass bars. And if you notice, there is a set of holes right here that looks like they could mate. There's another one of those in the middle of the rod. And there's all kinds of stuff going on down here, as well as this decorative little aperture. I don't know if this does anything or not, like a fine gradient scale or something. If we turn this over, we can see at the top that we've got these brass bars and the screws are threaded in. These are also traditional style square headed screws. And this, uh, I actually really like the rough finishing of the material. Sometimes things can get over polished, but this clock was handmade 200 years ago and this is how they left it. And I'm gonna do my best to not remove all of this and leave some of the original charm. So anyway, we have old screws old screws and then we get down here and this is a modern um, almost like an electrical plate screw and these are square heads but they're brass and if we flip this over we can see these are modern hex nuts on this so something was changed on this pendulum and i don't know what it's supposed to do when i uh, first showed this to you i was confused as to what the function of this is this steel shaft is pinned into this plate as well as this. There seem to be several different positions this can mount to, but this doesn't really make sense. Here is our nut for the pendulum. And if we move this down, first of all, this hits this bar, and then we wouldn't have clearance for our main rating nut. I wonder if this piece is actually a more modern fabrication. Uh, it's, it's hard to tell if, it's the, if the brass is new or old. Uh, there's these pinholes, I haven't measured them, but I wonder if they, hit, they would originally have fit here. But here's the cap of our pendulum jar. I don't really know how this would have worked in some other way. I can slide this in, but again, I need somewhere to put that, um, that adjustment nut. So I don't know what the deal is, and I'm really hesitant to dig into this too far until I get the clock actually running to know, is it anywhere close in time? The prior owner had the mercury, but did not have it in the clock. This is a lead weight in a uh, some kind of a tube or cup there. So uh, I really am hesitant to take this apart. I try to have a personal rule of not calling the whoever worked on it last an idiot until I'm sure. And I'm not sure yet. I'm not sure if I'm the idiot or if the last person was the idiot or there's some intermediate reason. But anyway, this is what I've found so far on the pendulum. We're going to put that aside and dive into the main movement. And then when we get the clock together, we'll do some basic timing and find out if we're even in the universe like this and then make a plan. And now it's time to get inside the movement. This is the front side of the movement. I'm going to take off all of the apparatus on the top plate here then I'm going to actually flip the movement over because the main pillar screws are on the other side. And the moment of truth. Here we are on the first time inside of the clock. 
And clocks like this are always like spelunking, like cave exploring. And all kinds of people have touched this since it was built. I presume all of these originally were jewels. And if we look at it now, over the years, some of them have been cracked or broken, and they've been replaced by brass bushings. So we've got a real jewel at the top. We've got two brass bushings there. We've got a real jewel, and we got a brass bushing with a big lead filler on this side. On the front plate, we've got one big jewel down here, and then we've got some brass bushings toward the top. I am going to pull one of these brass bushings out, and I'd like to see what it would take to replace that. There are jewel suppliers now. I'm gonna do that research, and uh, that will kind of determine what the cost is. If they're custom, that might be prohibitive, and then we may run with some of this, but I would love to put at least the top of the train back in its original jeweled condition. A few days have passed since our last video, and in that time I've got the plates polished, I've got everything clean, I've got pivots polished, plates are lacquered, and uh, these are the normal steps that I would do to any clock. We have an outstanding issue of that is, do we have the ability to try to replace these brass bushings with jewels? The jury is still out on that. The initial quote I got from the one jewel supplier I know of was a little bit prohibitive. Not sure we'll be able to make that work or not. I wanna get the clock together and I might actually run it for a while. So uh, I don't know when you'll actually see this video, how much time will have elapsed since the first section to when I, when I have more to comment on. But I'm gonna put the clock together and just live with it for a while and see how does it run. Back. I've got the astral regulator movement back in the case and I'm attempting to get this to run. I had to do a little shimming on this pivot here to give it enough clearance and also a little, a few other tweaks here and there. And um, as you may know, this is the first time I've attempted to run the clock. And it's pretty out of beat. And when I take this apart, I'll show you what the deal is. There is a beat adjustment mechanism on this clock, but honestly, this is such a mystery to me. This whole pendulum rod is so odd because there are some things that don't seem to do what was intended for them to do. One of those is the beat adjuster. Basically, to adjust the beat, we need to change the relationship between the escape wheel and the verge and gravity of the pendulum. And so the beat adjuster has to actually be in a position where it either moves the pendulum or moves the crutch to actually change that relationship. On this clock, for some reason, the beat adjuster is about here on the pendulum rod, which is actually above the crutch position. And so it does, I guess, change the center of gravity very slightly, but only the very top part of the pendulum from the suspension spring down to the beat adjuster. I don't understand what was going on there. I spoke earlier about some mysteries about these pin locations and maybe this piece not being original. So I, I wanna get this running and I'm trying to decide what to do with this. Uh, right now, the only way to really adjust the beat is by bending the crutch here. And there are banking pins underneath that you can see right there. So right now it's in a good position in that it hits both banking pins instead of hitting the pallets on the escape wheel. So I really don't want to bend that anymore, but what I think I want to do is actually retrofit a functional beat adjustment system right here. And let me show you another clock that has one that I think I can knock up uh, in a relatively short amount of time that's going to accomplish what we need. Here is a Hershey Christopher Columbus. This is a very nice clock. I did a video on a very similar movement where I uh, repaired the decoration on the movement plates. And uh, one of the things that this clock has is, I think, a perfect beat adjuster for what we're trying to do. And you can see there's a disc on the back that has an eccentric pin. Now this one is going to be set up a little differently than how I proposed to do it for our clock. And again, this is uh, poorly timed. I'm hitting you at the beginning of winding week here. But you can see that with that eccentric disc, we have a way to change the relationship of the pendulum rod, which is driven by gravity, from the crutch by just sliding that wheel around. So I think we can make something very similar to this and retrofit it without too much change to the clock. Here's the situation with the parts out of the clock. We have the pendulum suspension spring up here, 
Here is the beat adjuster that's on the pendulum as I received it. And here is the slot where the pendulum crutch rides. This goes approximately like this in the clock. So in order to change the relationship to actually accomplish beat adjustment, what has to happen is the angle of how these pallets hit the escape wheel has to be adjusted relative to the center of gravity of the pendulum. But if you look at it, the beat adjustment is up here, which means all we're really doing is we're making the pendulum curve a little bit, like so. Normally these beat adjusters are below the crutch rather than above where the crutch hits. So I don't know, clearly some things have been adjusted on this pendulum. Um, I'm not sure if this was ever uh, functional <laughs> as it was designed. But this is the problem that we're trying to solve. I can make adjustments, and you can see that someone has done this in the past where they have bent the crutch. That actually does do what we need to do because it changes the relationship of the pallet position to where the crutch meets the pendulum. But it's not very adjustable. Uh, it's hard to make fine adjustments, and I think it's just a poor system. So what I'm going to do here, this is just pinned in, this pin. I'm going to carefully remove this pin here to just expose the hole and then we're going to add our eccentric disc behind this and then have our pin be just slightly above uh, I guess or slightly below we could go the either way our eccentric disc and then that will let us adjust the pin which goes through the slot and the pendulum rod relative to here and the only change that we have to really make to the clock is to this pin so I think that's an acceptable modification for uh, adding a feature that's really pretty critical in a clock like this. Here's what I came up with. I made a disc and then actually just staked in the original pin. And then this lets us adjust this position relative to the crutch. Uh, please forgive the completely inappropriate screw. That's what I had. And if my brain would have been operating on all cylinders, I would have actually tapped the screw into this disc rather than drilling it to size. Uh, but this is going to do the job, I believe, and at this stage I'm going to just try to make the clock run and see what else we need to do to bring it into as uh, good a condition as we can. We are back in the case. That feels really good to get this out of the workshop. I have the front hardware put back on and the hands are in place and it's running, which is really exciting to me. A couple notes on the operation of the front of the clock. We have this five-sided sprocket that lifts the ratchet that drives the hour wheel. So again, we have seconds at the top, minutes, hours. And so if I advance this, you can see what happens. It starts lifting. And there are hour hand jumps every fifth of an hour, which is a little strange. And there it goes. Now, one interesting thing about there being five points on this sprocket and a four-sided hole is there is only one orientation that the minute hand works in where the hour changes when the minute hand is at 12 o'clock. So that took a little bit of trial and error to find that spot. And I also ended up adjusting this spring right here because this hour hand would jump either more than one-fifth of an hour at a time or sometimes if I had too much tension not at all and you can see somebody in the past had done some work to try to balance this hand and there's a big glob of solder on the back so I'm going to leave it there and see what happens and uh, I've just got this together it's been running only intermittently as I've been playing with it but I'm going to leave the dial off and just let it run for a while and see if it's reliable uh, this is somewhat sensitive to being in beat, as all deadbeat clocks are. But it's running at the moment, so if this runs well for uh, 24 hours or so, I'll go put the dial on and I'll continue to live with it, and then that will inform what additional work I do to this clock. Thanks for watching.